Hey, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to another video. So yesterday, I gave my grades for every single Western Conference team based on their seasons thus far, far compared to their expectations and goals in the season. So today, we are moving on to the Eastern Conference, going through all 16 teams. Again, this is based on what we thought about these teams heading into it, how we thought they were going to perform, what their goals were, because obviously for a rebuilding, retooling team, it's not playoffs or bust for them. I'm not going solely based on the standings. So without further ado, let's dive into it. Up first, we got the Pittsburgh Penguins. I'm going to go with the C-plus for the Pittsburgh Penguins. I don't think anybody can really defend their season thus far. After trading for Eric Carlson, the expectations were playoffs. Did I think that they were a true, true contender? Not really, but I thought they would, at the bare minimum, be a 90 three 95 point wildcard team probably in that third divisional spot so the fact that right now they're probably going to finish at around 86 87 points miss the wild card by four or five points although they have won their last two games i think it has been a massive disappointment to the point where they had to trade jake gensel and when looking at this core considering carlson's 33 crosby's 36 malkin's 37 letang i believe is 37 as well there's not a lot of optimism. There's not a lot of optimism for this core going forward. I'm not sure how you can retool around guys so old considering their prospects, unless they hit on like two, two out of the three Jake Gensel prospects and they're good NHL players in the next two to three years. I'm not sure how they're going to turn this around and it's very bleak. So I think a C minus just for this season and going forward, they have one of the worst outlooks in the entire NHL. Next up, we got the New York Rangers. I'm going to go with an A. Expectations for them were... Yeah, probably third in the division, battling maybe the Pittsburgh Penguins for third place in the division, maybe a tier below the Hurricanes or Devils, what we thought heading into it, but we still thought a safe playoff team. But the fact that they are in the playoff and the President's Trophy contention, probably going to run away with the Metro division. I think that is worth an A for the New York Rangers. Lafreniere has really taken another step, especially playing with Part Artemi Panarin, who in other years probably would be in heart talks, just the top four guys for the heart this year are so insane. So the Rangers are having a very good season. Not the most active deadline, not making those big, big splash moves like maybe last year, but I do like what they did. Should they have gone a little bit more all in potentially, but I do like getting Wenberg for a second and a fourth, as well as Roslovic for a fourth, a conditional fourth that can turn into a third so when looking at the rangers it's a very good season i wouldn't say it's an a plus it's not like we, we thought they'd make the playoffs so considering their mate win the president's trophy i'm gonna go with an a i think an a is fine for my new york islanders i'm gonna go with a b i, I b or b minus probably makes sense for them they're about meeting expectations right now i don't think anybody had them safely in the playoffs i don't think anybody had them as an 80 point team we expected high 80s, low 90s, and that's about exactly what they are right now. And we look at the New York Islanders, there's definitely some positives. Positives being Barzell and Horvat look fantastic as a duo. I'm really excited to see them over the next three to four years be around point per game. Barzell might hit goddamn 90 this year, as well as Noah Dobson fully emerging as a superstar, top 10 defenseman in the entire NHL. Those are massive positives without a doubt, but there also is some negatives. Mayfield and uh, Mayfield and Eng Engvall's extensions look horrendous. The fact that Mayfield's getting $3.5 million in the next six seasons, uh, Engvall $3 million in the next six seasons, those are god-awful. As well as Sorokin really not playing to what we expected. His contract doesn't kick in until next year, but really, you expect more from a guy that is pretty consensusly a top-five goalie heading into the season. Hasn't even played like a a top 10 goalie this season, maybe even top 15. Uh, going forward, again, this core is kind of screwed for the most part, and I say that as an Islanders fan. I don't think they're ever going to be a high, high-level contender, but if they get into the playoffs this year, I think they can be a dangerous team. Will they win the Stanley Cup? Probably not, but uh, I think they can make some noise in the playoffs, and I think for the next three to four years, they're going to be this okay pretty competitive team, but nothing really special. I'm really excited to see what Patrick Wad does next season with the full training camp full. Like that doesn't, doesn't get hired uh, mid season when they're kind of in a hole. So I think next season is going to be very telling for this core going forward. Columbus blue Jackets C minus uh, this one of the worst grades you're going to see me give out this, this season has been a shit show for the most part after making pretty win now moves going out and trading for Provorov trading for Severson they stink yet again they're on pace for 69 points and it's not even just the on ice product it's also the off ice has been another shit show obviously Mike Babcock getting fired whole PR nightmare the fact that they defended him then fired him like a week later that was absolutely pathetic then Yarmo Kakalainen gets fired like a month before the deadline they say we're done with you. We don't even want you touching the team this deadline. Uh, it's, it's, it's just not been good. You expected them, again, not to be a playoff team this year, but go from, similar to the Anaheim Ducks uh, in yesterday's video, go from bottom of the NHL to high 70s, maybe sniffing 80 points. You expected that from the Blue Jackets this year, but they are fully in the basement. Going forward, I still like their future. Uh, Juracek, Fantilli, Kent Johnson, Sillinger, Vornikov, 
They have a pretty good young core, but this season, without a doubt, has been a pretty massive failure for them. So I think you got to go with the C minus for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Next up, Carolina Hurricanes. A minus. I'm going to go A minus. They're definitely about needing expectations right now. You look at them, you maybe thought they would have won the division, but they're safely in the second place. And honestly, honestly, low key, being in second in the Metro is probably better than winning the goddamn Metro this year, considering right now I think the Rangers would be playing the Lightning versus the Carolina Hurricanes are going to be playing either the Flyers or the Islanders. So it's pretty funny how that works out with the horrible divisional seating that should 1000% be traded. So in Lake Carolina, they're about meeting expectations. And I would usually give that a B plus, but the fact they did go pretty all in at the deadline this year, getting a Jake Gensel, I am pretty optimistic about them heading into the playoffs a potential second round Rangers matchups definitely gonna be tough but I think this probably is the most talented Carolina team and especially considering uh Peter Kachetkov has really came on especially of late in the year of 2024 he has like a 920 save percentage the fact they may have found their franchise goalie going forward I do think this has been a pretty good season for the Carolina Hurricanes but of course it's gonna be judged based on what they do in the playoffs really a minus seems fair for them Buffalo Sabres Sabres get a C plus Big loss yesterday. They lost to the Red Wings. Yeah, that absolutely massive loss in the playoffs hunt for them. I think they probably just ended their potential chances. They went from like 27% all the way down to like 10 with that regulation loss. Or th- that was that was on Saturday. That was on Saturday. But um, yeah, so they're probably not going to make the playoffs. They had expectations to make the playoffs after missing by just one point. So to kind of have that brutal, brutal start was just really unfortunate for them. Dug themselves into far too big of a hole. And just on the whole, some of their players are having pretty disappointing seasons. Tage Thompson, Dylan Cousins, after having been fantastic last year, have kind of taken a step back. Still on great contracts, but maybe not the surplus, surplus value that we expected going forward. Owen Power has been really disappointing. You expected him to be the future franchise defenseman. Now he's probably definitely going to get jumped by Bowen Byram based on how Byram's playing. But there are positives on this team. Zach Benson as an 18-year-old has looked very good. J.J. Paterka has really broken out. Darlene has solidified himself as a no-doubt top 10 defenseman. And then in net, we thought Devin Levi was going to be their franchise netminder. UPL has been fantastic being probably the best goalie in the entire NHL since the, since the calendar term turn. He has been absolutely insane. So when looking at the Sabres, this season's definitely a failure, but there are positives to take away. They just need Tage Thompson, Dylan Cousins, Alex Tuck to play to the level that we know that they're capable of next year. And I think they're going to have a pretty decent shot at the playoffs, but this year, definitely disappointing C plus for them. Tampa Bay Lightning, a B. You can maybe go with the B plus just because we expected them to take a little bit of a step back with Vasilevsky out the first like six to eight weeks of the season. Then once Sergachev went down, there was real doubts about them making the playoffs, but they have really came out, came alive, especially of late. Last week, they beat the Rangers and the Panthers pretty convincingly. It looks like they're basically a playoff lock at this point. I'd say they have like a 90% chance. So although this team, it, they're expected to go on deep runs every single season, the fact that they have... I wouldn't say smashed expectations, but the fact they're going to be a safe playoff team, despite some of the struggles that they went through, Kucherov's playing absolutely out of the, out of his mind. I think a B is about fair for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Philadelphia Flyers, the Flyers. I'm going to go with an A. This is tough because if they end up if they end up missing the playoffs, it's going to be kind of disappointing, even though they have far exceeded expectations. Don't get me wrong. They're expected to be a bottom five team in the NHL. But if they end up missing the playoffs, that's going to leave a pretty sour taste in the fan base's mouth, considering they're going to have like the 15th overall pick, no playoffs to show for it in the rebuild is kind of because they still are like retooling, rebuilding. That's the one thing. If they make the playoffs, give them an A plus. I 100% agree, but I'm going to have them an A just because they might end up make, missing the playoffs. But Tortorella has really just t- changed the overall culture in Philadelphia, and they're definitely trending in the right direction once Mitch Cobb joins. Gochi, unfortunately, no longer with them anymore. But they're gonna have they're gonna have they're gonna build build up the prospect pool over the next couple of years and be a solid team. They're definitely heading in the right direction. And this year, they have far exceeded expectations, assuming they make the playoffs. Even if they don't, again, they're still ex- exceeding expectations. But if they miss, it would be pretty disappointing. Florida Panthers, an A as well. I'm not really gonna be giving out any A pluses in this one, only A's. There's no really Vancouver Canucks that went from like potentially not making the playoffs to being a goddamn President's Trophy winner. Flyers, definitely there's no argument. But look at the Florida Panthers. They were expected to be anywhere between second in the division to maybe a wild card team to maybe even missing the playoffs. Around mid 90s was kind of the expectation. Highly competitive, but we thought they're they're not gonna be like two years ago winning the goddamn President's Trophy. They might win the President's Trophy again. They have the best top six in the entire NHL, potentially just run two fantastic lines, as well as having very good forward depth post-Tarasenko trade. The defense core has been very solid. Forsling Ekblad has been one of the best defense pairs in the entire NHL, as well as Bobrovsky proving that 
Last year's playoff run wasn't really a fluke. He has a 9-16 in like 43 games this season, as well as Anthony Stolarz playing very good. One of the best backups in the entire NHL this year. Florida's been fantastic. They get an A. Montreal Canadiens, I'm going to go with a B about meeting expectations in terms of an overall team. When looking at it, they were expected. To, they're still two to three years away from making the playoffs, in my opinion. They were expected to be a mid-70-ish point team. So when looking at it, there's a lot of positives to take out of this season, though. When looking at a Nick Suzuki that has really established himself as potential number one center, do I think he's ever going to be a top 15 guy? No, but he can give you 70 to 80 points while being fantastic defensively. That's very good. Slavkovsky's emergence has been fantastic. 12 goals, 16 assists, 28 points in 36 games, as well as Cole Caulfield is probably the one maybe negative his goal scoring has kind of dipped as well as Kirby Doc tearing his ACL but I think a B is pretty fair for the Montreal Canadiens maybe even a B plus just because of how Slavkovsky has looked they're definitely trending in the right direction but it's, it's going to come down to whether some of their guys that they picked recently really turn into high level NHLers because right now clearly this this core this team this team this team is not close to being a playoff team right now they're going to need reinforcements from the prospect pool New Jersey Devils they get the worst grade out of these two parts. They get a straight up D. They had cover bust expectations after having 112 points last year. They re-signed Timo Meyer on an eight-year, $8.8 million contract. They traded for Tyler Toffoli, which I still think Tyler Toffoli is a better player than Sharon Govich right now. Obviously, Sharon Govich is much younger and it's going to be signed long-term in the Flames. So I thought that they were going to be high level. Everybody thought they were going to be a safe playoff team, potentially win the goddamn Stanley Cup. But the goaltending absolutely fell on its face. 894 save percentage. Vanacek, Dawes, uh, Schmidt, just absolutely unacceptable. And that really screwed the team. Definitely also losing uh, Dougie Hamilton to a torn pack after like 20 games. That really killed them as well. Made their young guys elevate when they kind of weren't ready to play big time minutes like that. But when looking at this, it really just comes down to the goaltending in that Hamilton injury. None of their players are really playing that bad outside of Timo Meyer having a really rough start production wise I think he has looked far better in the last month or so really getting back to the Timo Meyer that we that we know for the most part but the goaltending it's just been absolutely horrendous I thought they got a pretty lackluster return for Tyler to to not even get a first round pick and when you look at it yeah this is just a massively squandered opportunity while a lot of their guys were either still on ELCs like Dawson Mercer and Nemec and Luke Hughes they just wasted this year it's very disappointing. It's a D. Going forward, I still think they're going to be fine considering they have a very solid cap structure. It just need to figure out the goaltending. But this season, massive, massive failure. The Toronto Maple Leafs, a B. Uh, this this is about as vanilla as a season as you're going to get. They're expected to be a safe playoff team. They're on pace for 106 points. Marner, I'm mean, not Marner, Matthews and Nylander are having career years. That is fantastic to watch, but it seems like they are just a peg below the Panthers, the Rangers, or even the Boston Bruins right now. So when looking at that, didn't really do anything at the deadline. So yeah, I, I just think vanilla, not, not much to think about the Toronto Maple Leafs. It seems like Treliving kind of packed it in and said, they Dubas went all in last year. didn't leave me with a lot. I'm not willing to trade a first round pick to maybe just lose in the first round. So the Toronto Maple Leafs, they get a B. Uh, they're still going to, you can't really give a 106 point team a B minus or C plus. That would just be me hating. Boston Bruins, they get an A though. When looking at the Boston Bruins, they didn't have the expectations that the Toronto Maple Leafs had after losing Bertuzzi, Bergeron, Orlov, Krejci. They were expected to be battling for a wild card spot. Instead, they're near the top of the Atlantic Division. It's going to be them and Panthers absolutely battling it out down the stretch, as well as just being in contention for the President's Trophy. Guys like Trent Frederick really stepped up. Charlie Coyle's having a fantastic bounce back here. Jeremy Swayman's proving himself to be the franchise netminder. Makes Alinas Olmark expendable probably this season to go get some help, whether it is on that def defense core that hasn't really looked the same, especially Matt Grizzlick is not playing that good. They need to make some upgrades this summer, but this season, they've far exceeded expectations, in my opinion, and as a result, they get an A. Washington Capitals, they get a B. Maybe even, I could even see a B plus for them. When looking at them, they were in transition this year. Last year sold pretty heavily at the deadline. Their, their prospect pool is looking pretty good. They're bringing up guys this year to try out. Their old guys are kind of getting phased out. But despite that, they're in the playoff contention. Do I think they're going to end up making it? Probably not, but they're still a highly competitive team. They're actively like actively tried to not tank, but like retool this year. Meanwhile, Pittsburgh was going all in and they're ahead of goddamn Pittsburgh in the standings this year. Solid deadline, dumping a guy like Anthony Manta. Lindgren was having a fantastic start to the season, cooling off obviously a little bit, but he wasn't going to maintain a goddamn 928 save percentage. And when looking at it, guys like McMichael, uh, Protoss, LaPierre, they're all looking like Fran future uh, important pieces, maybe not high, high level guys, but future solid players for the next decade or so on the Washington Capitals. So they're going through this transitional period. And I would say that this was a successful season. We're going to see how it pans out in Washington. The Ottawa Senators, 
C minus, C minus. I wouldn't give them a Devils D or D plus just because they still hadn't proved themselves. Like the Devils were coming off a goddamn 112 point season. We expected that bare minimum playoffs. The Senators, I definitely overhyped them. I thought they're going to be much better. I thought their goaltending was going to be much better. But at the end of the day, this is a team that has made the playoffs in the last six years. So they get a C plus, still absolutely unacceptable. And again, it mainly has to do with goaltending. When looking at the Devils, they had an 894, which was second worst in the entire NHL. Ottawa is a goddamn 887. The difference between the Devils at 31st and the Ottawa Senators at 32nd is the difference between like 19th and 31st with the Devils. That's how big, that's how bad the gap is. And don't don't get me wrong, Ottawa's defense isn't like amazing by any chance. They give up a decent amount of high danger chances, but that but it has still just been unacceptable. Corpus has been the worst starting goalie, and it's looking hard to move off his contract this summer with four years left at $4 million. So when looking at the Ottawa Senators, as well as Kachuk and Stutzla, still very good young players. I'm not saying like their development's derailed, but they're having down years compared to last year and compared to the fact that they're young and we thought that they were going to take another step, as well as Claude Giroux just getting up there in age. You're wasting another elite Claude Giroux season. I don't know how many of those he's going to have left, so the fact they're squandering yet another one of him being a good first liner is unacceptable. Josh Norris's contract is looking like a massive liability. The fact he went through his third sur- shoulder surgery at 24 years old, and he has six years left at 7.95 $5 million. That is massively scary. Chikrin, going to be interesting to see what happens with him this summer. The one positive that I could maybe extrapolate from this team is, or two positives. Shane Pinto looks fantastic. Looks like he can be that a uh, second line center that Josh Norris, we thought Josh Norris was going to be, not Josh Norris's question mark. Shane Pinto really, well, three, three positives. Pinto, Ridley Gregg looks very good for a rookie. And then lastly, Jake Sanderson looks like he's progressing to be that future number one defenseman. Owen Power kind of went backwards. Sanderson continues to be better to a minute 30, two more minutes a game. Offensive production is up around half a point per game. His new deal in an eight year, $8.05 million contract is going to look like it's, it's looking like a very good deal for the auto senators, but still this season, massive failure by them. And then lastly, we got the Detroit Red Wings. And although it's been rough for the past week or so for the most part. I'm still going to go with the B. They have been free falling, but they were massively, massively outproducing expectations. If they end up missing the playoffs. That'd be unfortunate, but they're still well ahead of a Buffalo Sabres or an Ottawa Senators in terms of right now. Guys like Lucas Raymond look fantastic. He's taking that next step in terms of being their future franchise forward. Dylan Larkin was playing great. Uh, the brink hit solid uh, outside of the first eight games. He did slow down a little bit, but I think that you got to be pretty optimistic still as a Red Wings fan. Also, Eiserman, fantastic one-year deals to Patrick Kane, Shane Gothisbear, uh, Sprung, and Alex Line will be back next year at only $900,000. More Cider, some struggles, but he also plays against like the hardest competition in the entire league. I think people are overreacting to the Wings just because of the last two or three weeks, but overall, I still think it is a pretty solid season. They get a B. I'm going to throw up the graphic. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about the graphic? What do you think about the grades as a whole? And I'll be seeing the next one.